And so we're just honored again to have her with us. So thank you. Goodness. I love that. What a way to lift somebody up before they have to give a message to people and be super nervous. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everybody. Super excited to be here. Not only, I mean, it's a great Sunday, right? We had snow the other day. Um, we get to find out what Heidi and Iris are having. Um, and I don't have to work tomorrow, so I'm super excited about that. <laughs> Raise your hand if you have to work tomorrow. Woo! <laughs> it always makes for a good Sunday if you do not have to work the next day. <laughs> super excited about that. Um, okay, so today I am here to talk about it is time to be made new. Um, so I'll go ahead and pray to get the message started. Holy Spirit, we just invite you into this space, um, into our hearts, into our minds. Um, just thank you for using me as your vessel up here to deliver the message that you've laid on my heart this week. Lord God, I pray that um, you just keep us focused today on you. Um, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So have you ever felt the need for change? Um, whether you've gotten stagnant in an area, a little comfortable, uh, maybe in the past, maybe now, you feel a change is coming. Something different, something that's just new. You want, you crave that newness because you're tired of just being in the same areas over and over again. But maybe you have this feeling that something's changing and it makes you uncomfortable. If you're anything like me, I am a routine person. I wake up, I try to wake up at the same time, especially the last couple of weeks. I've been waking up before my alarm, alarm goes off at five. I get up, I turn the little heater on in this little space that we have set up and I click on the, the news and I sit with my Bible and that's my little God time. Um, and then about seven, drink the coffee, start, you know, start drinking my coffee, make myself breakfast, get ready for the day. Ashley and I go to work. You know, we work, come home, I work out, I will do some laundry, Ty comes home, food, we eat, hang out a little bit, bedtime, boom, start the whole day over again. I am a routine person to a T. So as soon as a wrench gets thrown in that, I'm like, hold up, what just happened? Like, <laughs> I don't know if anybody else is like that, but maybe it's just me. But I like to have routine. I Myron, I know Myron's the same. He feels like <laughs> he likes to have routine. And if something is a little off, it kind of throws off your day, you know? And there's people who can fly by the seat of my, their seat of, that's Ty. I feel like you marry each other, right? You have one person that's a little more organized than the other. That's Ty. He can, he can just wake up in the morning, his feet hit the floor, and he's like, whatever today holds, I'm here for it. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> three o'clock, we have this, four o'clock, we have that. I am a routine person. So when something new comes into play, that's when it starts to throw a little bit of like an uncomfy feeling. So, you know, what is this new thing that you seek or that you might be seeking or that you feel is coming into play? So ha have you felt or maybe in the past or maybe now you have that, that stirring in your spirit that something new is happening. Or, you know, you, you want, you crave that radical change. You feel that radical change is happening. So what if that something new, that routine shift, is exactly the journey that we have to go on and that we're about to go on? So like I said, today's message is it's time to be made new. So what does that mean exactly that it's made to be new? Spiritually, physically, body, mentality. You know, we stepped into a new year with tons of resolutions that come up. And we say, yeah, we're going to work out this amount of times. We're going to eat less of this. We're going to spend more time in the word. We're gonna, and we, we start to list off all these resolutions we have, this newness we want to step into and this change. And then we set our steps up, set our set, oh, hello, hello, okay, pause. All right, we set ourselves up for failure. Because usually those resolutions don't last the entire year. And then as soon as that resolution <laughs> fails, we start to feel like a failure. We start to feel like we did something wrong because we had a goal and we didn't meet it. So the definition of the word new is not existing before, 
made, introduced, or discovered recently or now for the first time, or already existing but seen, experienced, or acquired recently or now for the first time. Like a new to me car, but it's not brand new. So what about a spiritual newness? 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 17 says, So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. Doesn't that just make you think for a second when you hear that verse? We belong to Christ, therefore we are new. When we accept him into our hearts, into our lives, we're made new in that moment. So if you want somebody to look at you in the new light and in the new life that you've accepted when you've accepted God, don't we have to do the same for others? When we look at somebody, we shouldn't look at the past, their past fruits or the things that they've done wrong. We should look at them as the new person in Christ that they have became, become. It's that simple, right? Case closed, we're done, we're over. So we have a new life. You know, we're, we're, we're made in God's image, we're brand new. But it's not that simple. If it was that simple, we'd be able to look at everybody the same, look at everybody in, in his new mercies every morning, and then we'd be set, we'd be good to go. But that also means if you would like to be looked at as a new person in the spirit, then you have to stop picking up the old things that you laid behind. So the spiritual gunk that you've set before God in, in, in front of the cross and, and you've dealt with that, and as soon as you wake up and you say, God, I'm a new person, you know, I repent, I, 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 I'm following you, as soon as we get out of bed, it's a new day. So leave behind what happened yesterday. Leave behind what happened last week. Leave behind what people have said about you because each morning, God is giving us a fresh start. So that means when we want to be new, we have to leave behind the old. This new season of exponential blessings and fruit is what we're stepping into, the calling that he has for our lives because the old is separating us from him. When we're separated, how can we step into the full calling that he has for our lives? We want to step into this newness that he's calling and, 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 and stirring in our spirit, but what will people think of us? If I change my job, what will I do next? If I quit my job, what will I do next? When I lose my finances, I know God is calling me and saying it's time. It's time for this new season in life. But it's scary. It's scary because in our lives, we have this routine and we have this same thing that we do every morning, every day. And as soon as God wants to change that with something new, we want to say, wait, wait a minute. This isn't what I had planned for my life. But that's the point. To me, it's exciting. It's so exciting. Being made new is so uncomfortable but it could be easy. It could be easy if we're joyful about it. If we know in our hearts that what God has set next for us is, is our best, then we won't be sad about leaving behind the old. If God has a new job for us, it's easier to say no and quit the old job. If God wants to take us somewhere, it's easy. If we... If we um, mesh the joy with the grief of losing something, that's because God has placed that on our hearts. So it becomes fulfilling, right, when we rely so much on God that we instantly look to him instead of the world. He has the solution to any problem in any equation. So if you don't know where God is calling you in this new season, you can either remain in the old ways and constantly have stress or anxiety about things that you can't control, or you can shift into, be, into being made new. The, <laughs> I have a story. 
and it's, it's so bad. Okay, so this past week, my wonderful coworker, Ashley, um, and I were in this house, and I was like, Ashley, I need to call these people because, you know, Ty and I went to Cancun in October, and we flew through Frontier, and it was all great when we were there, and then we were headed back. They canceled our flight, like 4 a.m., we're going to be stuck. I'm, I'm freaking out. We're going to be stuck in Cancun. We have nowhere to stay. So, you know, I instantly start looking online, calling my mom. Mom, please call these people. I can't call, you know, out of Mexico, all this stuff. So long story short, we cancel our flight through Frontier. They tell us, yeah, we'll refund you. You'll get the refund. Well, it is now January, and we have not seen that refund. So I call frontier. I called the vacation express that we went through. I, I call this uplift. I call all these people and I'm, I'm getting so frustrated. I've spent like all the last day, then that morning. So then I'm on the phone with frontier and I go through all the, the, you know, hold music and all of that. And I get a lady and I'm like, I just don't understand because we haven't got our, you know, I'm blah, 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 all this stuff. She goes, ma'am, you've called frontier internet not Frontier Airlines. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, so all I did was just, I could just laugh. I just start laughing. And I'm like, and I go to Ashley and I'm like, I just called Frontier Internet for Frontier Flights. And she's like, it probably happens way more than you think because the lady had that number right then and there for Frontier Airlines. And she's like, this is who you need to call. And I'm like, I told her, I'm so sorry. Like, just disregard my problems. And so all that to say is I kept calling all these people. And, you know, I'm having on speakerphone. And Ashley's like, I don't know how you haven't, like, flipped. I, I don't know how you haven't flipped on people. And I said, I'm changing the way I'm thinking. I said, I'm going to choose joy over situations. God's got it. He's in control. I'm not going to stress. And she looks at me and she goes, yeah, right. Cause I'm not that person. <laughs> She's like, yeah, right. Because I'm, I haven't been that person, right? It's so much easier to choose anger and, and yell at people in certain situations. Right. And then on our way home, I'm like, yes, I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to choose joy. God's got this. It's in his hands on the way home. This guy's behind me on my butt. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Yelling at him. Right? Like, what? Well, get off my butt. And I'm like, okay, there we go. See, just like that. Just like that. It's easy to choose anger. It's easy to yell. It's easy to choose the chaos. It's not easy to choose the joy in the stressful situations. It's not easy to choose happiness when somebody calls us a name or when somebody wants to come and confront us and be mean. It's easy to lash back out at them. It's not easy to sit there and say, you know what? I love you. God loves you. And, and have joy in the situation. So that right there showed me that what, what am I going to do about a situation, about flights? What am I going to do about... But something like that can really cause somebody to just be mad the rest of the day, to be upset the rest of the day, to completely change your mood. If you let that one little thing alter your joy and instead of having peace in moments it's gone so that's a whole new way of life right that's a whole new way of thinking that's changing your thought process to reflect peace in some of the hardest moments changing the way you react it leaves less room for chaos and negativity though if we are constantly saying okay no nope, god you've got this I, I will find joy i will choose joy in these moments it's new, it's uncomfortable, and it takes work, but are we willing to put that in? It will become easier over time. It's a new shifting of our mind. It's hard to ask Jesus to erase chaos and give you peace instead of panicking in every situation that arises, because I'm a panicker. <laughs> I am a panicker. And it's hard. It's, it's hard not to be. But if we, instead of replacing that, if we replace panic with God's got this, I can't change it. God's got this. It'll start to shift how we react to every situation. And that's exactly what the enemy wants us to do. He wants to place panic and chaos, especially in this new year that we're stepping into. Look at, look at where we're already headed right now. Panic, chaos is in the world. So you can either be in the panic and chaos 
or you can be on the other side of it and say, no, God's got this. God's got this year. God's got my life. God's got everything in his hands right now. So I can either be in the panic and the chaos, or I can be on the other side of it and say, whatever tomorrow holds, I know God has it. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> I know God has it. So it's, it's powerful, right, to renew your mind and your heart. It's a powerful step for the kingdom because, like I said, the enemy wants us to do the opposite. But in 1 Corinthians 15, 36 through 38, it's first talking about the resurrection body in that, in that scripture. But if you listen to the rest of this, it says, when you put a seed into the ground, it doesn't grow into a plant unless it dies first. And what you put in the ground is not the plant that will grow, but only a bare seed of wheat or whatever you are planting. Then God gives it the new body he wants it to have. A different plant grows from each kind of seed. So the plant has to die first for it to be what's going to grow. So your old self, your old ways have to die first. Your what ifs don't matter. Because something new has to come from that. Something new is coming. The seed in the ground has to die. So what we put in that, what we lay in front of God has to die before the, what's, what's coming into fruition can, can take place. Because he's giving us something new. If you think about that, a different plant grows from each kind of seed. A seed you may have planted long ago can finally be coming into fruition but with fruition comes letting the fruits of the past die so the new fruits can take place right so think about something that you've maybe spoken or prayed about years ago and it's finally coming into place because it's growing it's being made new. It's coming to life. You're seeing it before you, before your eyes. You're seeing it happen. So letting things go that you are holding on to is finally going to create the space to let whatever God has placed into your heart and on your life to grow. Creating that space is what we have to do to get rid of what is standing in between us and God. We want God to transform us in every area possible. We want him to make us new. But then when he starts to make things new and he starts to take away things, certain areas in our lives, we're like, well, are you sure I can't do this while doing this? Are you sure I can't have a part of this while still doing this? But you know God is telling you to do something, to head in a direction. But you're like, I kind of want to go back here, but then I kind of want to go up here, and then I kind of want to do this, I kind of want to do that. But God has stirred up something in our hearts. God has stirred up something. I can't be the only one that is feeling this spiritual change. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. It, and it's scary. And it's, and it's sometimes frustrating because right now, I mean, for me currently, I'm in the space of, I know new stuff is happening. It is, it's happening before our very eyes, but I don't exactly know what's happening. Like I, I don't, I, you know, sometimes you have that season where you're like, yep, this is what's happening. I know for sure. This is the direction I'm supposed to go. I'm comfortable. You know, I'm, I'm going in the path God has called me, but then Sometimes you're like, God's changing my heart. God's changing the direction that I'm going in, and I don't know where that direction is. So do you panic? Do you start to take things into your own hands, or do you let God have it all and say, just take me, just direct me. Change my heart. Put me in the new, in the new place, in the new position that you have me. Because he's equipped us. It's realizing the fruits that we have are new, and he's equipping us with that new body, a new spirit. He has equipped us. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, 
And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Again, it's being transformed, changing the way you think. After everything God has continued to do for us and show, and he constantly shows his goodness. How can we not wake up and place him first in our everyday lives and situations and live entirely for him? When I asked God to change me and change the way of thinking, he did. And he will. He will guide us if we ask him to. I, <laughs> I got completely wrecked in someone's kitchen, bawling as I'm, as I'm cleaning. Like, and I told Asha, I'm like, I feel crazy. Like, I'm like, I'm crying in this kitchen. I feel like weird. I, I mean, because of a song that just happened to play. And because we go into homes and we just, we play worship music. Because sometimes it's weird, but sometimes you can go into a home and you feel things. You start, you feel like, oh, it's the enemy, right? Because it's a spiritual warfare every day. Every day the enemy is trying to attack what God has placed on our hearts, what God has deposited into us. Every day the enemy is trying to take that away. So we go into homes and we can feel things. And we can say things and we can, you know, maybe lash out at one another or lash out at, oh, our husbands or, you know, I wish I'm not saying she did that or I did that. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying, just saying, Jordan, it's fine. <laughs> um, but it's easy. It's easy when you go into different spaces right? When you go into Walmart, when you go into things like that, it's easy because it's a spiritual battle. So we play the worship music and it's crazy how fast that can change around because as you're speaking out, as you're, as you're, you know, worshiping, you are speaking the name of Jesus. You are speaking things into existence. And so that song came on and I don't remember exactly what he said, but he basically said, I have nothing fit for a king. So here's my worship. Here's my hallelujah. And I just lost it. I'm loot, like I'm bawling at one point. And I'm just like, that is so intense. And it's true. We have nothing fit for a king, but to worship and to give him our hallelujah and to give him our yes every day. That's all he asks from us. So as, as that had happened, I just, I feel like, I'm just, yes, like, let's go. Let's go, God. Like, I'm here for it. I am here for the change. And that's what it takes is saying, yes, I'm here for the change. Change me, make me new. I'm here for it. And God will. He will. He's here to help us. He's here to provide for us. And he will help us to conform our minds and our hearts and not to conform to this world, but to change it. We are here to change, not conform. I love analogies and, and um, puns and things like that, and Ty kind of helped me with this one. Um, but it's like an old car. It can be made new, but it doesn't just happen overnight. Some people take years and years to fix an old car. They see it. Like some people, you know, can look at an old car and I know Myron loves it. Myron goes to the car shows, right? And he can see the beauty in this vehicle that was once so old and it was turned into something new. And other people can look at an old car and be like, that is junk, scrap it. You can't do anything with that. But then other people, <laughs> me too, Danelle, me too. <laughs> but other people can look at an old vehicle and see the potential and they get excited about fixing it. You know, you don't know, but that's the thing. If you agree to, I'm going to fix this car, do you really know what's exactly wrong with that car until you actually start to look at it? When you look at the engine, when you look at the inside, it needs completely transformed. Most older vehicles do. But then you see what it used to look like, and then you see the new beauty of that old vehicle. 
because you put work into it, because you transformed it, because you made it new. So that's like us. We take a look on the inside and we say, this is what needs work. This is what needs changed. But then when you start to let God tinker with that and change that, the outcome is amazing. And it's always beautiful. He never fails. I got a word so far from each message um, that we've had in this series. So Danelle showed us it's time for God's kingdom. And she said the word surrender. Gay told us it's time to wake up. And she said strengthen. I kept getting the word renewed. Ephesians 4, 21 through 24 says, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So just because he's renewed that, and because something is new, doesn't mean we don't protect it. And it, I wrote this before I even bought these yesterday. But So what do you do when you buy a new pair of shoes? Yes, you wear them. I know that. Or a new shirt. You want to wear those things carefully, though. Like, I'm not going to go out in the, mud, in the mud and in the rain and be like, yep, let me wear my new shoes. No, I'm like walking like this on, the, on you know, Ty says, don't crease your sneaks because you, you get the little crease in it, right? <laughs> That's what he says. So you, you're careful, right? When you wear that new thing or you have that new car and, and you want to, you know, buy the things for it or you want to wash it all the time, you want to clean the inside, just like us. Does it, just because we're new or have been made new or transformed doesn't mean we don't take care of ourselves. doesn't mean we don't dig into the word. It doesn't mean that we don't worship. It means that we have to take even more precautions. When we, when we accept Jesus every morning, that means that we're also accepting the spiritual battles that will follow in that day. So that means we have to take precautions. That means with new shoes, we wash them, we, you know, tie Believe it or not, when he was younger, used to sleep with his shoes. That's how much he loved them, is what his mother said. He loved shoes so much that he didn't want anything else. He's like, buy me a new pair of shoes. That's what I want. And he would sleep, like sleep with the shoes. He'd have them in the bed and he would sleep and cover them with the, the, the blanket and he would sleep with his brand new shoes because he loved them that much, right? It, that, that's that to that level right is what God wants us to be like he wants us to be with that and in that level I want to be in this newness and I want to be with him so much that I'm going to read my word I'm going to you know I'm going to worship constantly I'm going to speak life and not negativity that new car will need oil it will need things to keep going so do we. So a couple more verses I have that talk about new is Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired. Garrett, you will get old. <laughs> <laughs> and young men will fall in exhaustion but those who trust in the lord will find new strength they will soar high on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not faint we're in the season of new strength we are in the year of new strength that we haven't had before but it doesn't mean it just comes so easily and so naturally it does because God has granted us that, but at the same time, this new strength is something that we have to work for. We have to, we have to be willing to take that step to have that new strength. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 says, but forget, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do for I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? 
I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. It's dry, right? Like it's been dry. It has been dry in Martinsville. It has been dry in churches all over the place. And he is about to make a pathway through the wilderness. And what does that look like? We don't know. We don't know what this something new is that he's about to do. But it's by no accident that we all kind of feel that all over the place, all over the world. Christians are waking up and saying something's happening. Something's about to happen. So you can either be fully equipped and on board with the change or you can be in a spiritual slumber and stick with the old. I don't want to be in the old when this change is happening. I don't. So, yeah, it is like being out of style, right? I don't want that. I don't want to be I don't want to be the person that's like, "Wait, hold up. What's happening here?" While well, everybody else is like, "We're going, we're going." Like I don't want to be that person that's like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> We're doing what? We're going where? I want to be that person that's like, yep, God has told me. God has shown me, and I'm ready to go. I'm on board with what is happening, with this change. It's saying yes. It's accepting that new strength. It's accepting that new path. And he says, do you not see it? It's already begun. And it has, right? Like, we're almost at the end of January, unbelievably it's been, it's gone by so fast for me maybe not for you but for me it has but that's also because i don't know why but i'm just in this this season of wanting and craving more because i spoke that out and said god change my thinking help me find joy help me find this new i'm ready for whatever it is so it's a challenge for you are you willing to do that are you willing to say, God, whatever, whatever this newness is that you have for me, I'm ready to accept that. I'm ready to take on that strength. Um, if the worship team wants to go ahead and come up. Um, so I don't know if you guys have heard this before, but I hadn't um, for some reason. I don't know why I've never heard of this. Um, so I'll kind of read it to you, um, hopefully without crying. So <clears throat> there was a moment when Moses had the nerve to ask God what his name is. God was gracious enough to answer, and the name he gave is recorded in the original Hebrew as YHWH. Over time, we have added an A and an E in there to get Yahweh. Presumably because we have a preference for vowels, but scholars and rabbis have noted that the letters YHWH they represent breathing sounds. YHWH represents breathing. Aspirated consonants that in the Hebrew alphabet would be translated. It is commonly taught that the name is missing the vowels, but one said they were aspirate consonants, consonants that actually sound like vowels when pronounced without the intervening vowels. It actually sounds like breathing. YH, inhale, WH, exhale. So a baby's first cry, his first breath speaks the name of God. A deep sigh calls his name. Really, Jesus, I didn't think I was going to cry, but here I am. A groan, a gasp that is too heavy for mere words. Even an atheist speaks his name. They're unaware that that YHWH is a. That's what that translates. 
his very life giving constant acknowledgement to his creator. We are, we are creating, he is creating us. And in the moment we come out into the world, we instantly say his name. Likewise, a person is gone with their last breath when God's name is no longer being spoken. So when I can't utter anything else, is my cry calling out his name? Does being alive mean we're just speaking his name constantly? Is it heard the loudest when you're the quietest? In sadness, we breathe heavy sighs. In joy, our lungs feel almost like they're going to explode. In fear, we hold our breath. We've been told to breathe slowly to help us calm down. When we're about to do something hard, we take a deep breath to find our courage. Breathing almost looks kind of like praying. For centuries, there have been those that have insisted that the name of God is so holy that we dare not speak it because of how unworthy we are. So how generous and how amazing is God to choose to give himself a name that we can't help but speak every moment. We're always walking, sleeping, living the name of God just by breathing. By breathing, we're calling out the name of Jesus. Isn't that just so unfathomable to even think about how much he loves us how much he's there in the moments that we've cried we've been mad we've been frustrated we've wondered what even is the point of what I'm doing God what do you have for me next all it takes is just that breath and we're saying his name and he's there with us yes he's there inside of us but just breathing and we're saying his name that that release and we're saying his name how can we not how can we not wake up every day and just say God it's yours whatever you have for me make me new because his mercies are new every day every day it'll never run out no matter what we do what we've done, what we say. It's new every morning. And we get that. We get to live in that. We get to give that to people. We get to show people. We get to take them on on this journey with us. Just by breathing. Even the people who don't believe are still speaking the name of Jesus and they have no idea. So, um, Dear Heavenly Father, as we step into this worship, even if we just breathe, we're worshiping you. We're calling out your name, Lord God. But as we step into this moment of worship, I pray that you start to renew and strengthen our hearts, Lord God, for this this change that you have us on. I pray that you start to awaken some things in us that maybe you, that we placed, we placed in the ground so long ago and they're, they're coming into fruition. I pray that you would start to, um, just make us excited Lord God for you, for your presence, for the new year that we're stepping into. Make us joyful. We just love you so much and and we thank you for your blessings and everything you're doing in our lives and in this church and we pray more exponential growth and and more freedom and 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 more peace in our minds and our hearts and in our families in jesus name i pray amen i'm gonna have you stand up 
We're going to read a scripture that is kind of our prayer today. So if you want to go ahead and close your eyes and put your hands out like you're receiving a gift. It's from Psalms 139. What we are saying to God is, oh yes, you shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, hi God. You are breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship an adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit. How I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. And all of the stages of my life are spread out before you. The days of my life are all prepared before I even lived one day. <laughs> 